uh, we were right in the middle of hostilities uh, with Magna Grecia. We need to conquer them. They are allied with the Pyrrhus. But the Pyrrhus troops have been wiped out by the Carthaginians ones. Uh, I really don't know where this will end, but it looks like Carthage could mess up with our own war. Um, let's just check this, the general situation before imposing the game. Um, the country is at war. We have unused trade routes, uh, as usual, I say. Uh, well, at this point, we can go for the internal ones and try to set up some uh, external ones later. Uh, Roma will get salt from Piceno, and some new and Apulia will just exchange with each other. Yeah, all dark green, that's good. Otherwise, the populists faction would be uh, rising because of uh, uh, unused trade routes. But the modifier is not there anymore. Uh, we could pass a law, Lex Carpurnia. This law established a permanent court headed by a praetor who observed provincial governors and dealt with, theoretically, extortion and corruption on their part. The condition, uh, the member is not a member of the civic faction, because of that small tax bug, and we would get a minus 5% corruption. We don't have a corruption problem at the moment. Uh, like, now the good way to look at it is just put all the characters in um, in the character characters screen uh, and order the list by corruptness and you can see that really everyone is at zero percent corruptness is it's something that starts uh, popping out uh, popping back up, up later when uh, you have uh, governors um, that have to take care of foreign of uh, far lands and stuff like that. Um, so, our armies. We have uh, 2000 uh, heavy infantry in Rome that we wanted uh, to send as reinforcements, but that, uh, that really didn't work out. And um, here we have the, our legatus, Quintus Emilius Papus, legate, first legion. Uh, we just won um, this siege by assaulting the city uh, and now is uh, recovering um, morale. So we have to wait and see what happens before moving. Uh, and on the internal politics side, mm, our consul is uh, ending his term on next year. Um, May 75 and oh funny names yeah yeah actually <laughs> the, there are way funnier names uh, ancient uh, Roman names Latin can, can sound quite, fun, quite, uh, quite funny like you have um, Publius Cornelius Rufinus here okay like I see and like I like this one, Lucius Emilius Barbula. Yeah, that, that sounds really funny. Regulus Sophus. Uh, yeah, our consul is ending his term next year, so he's still in charge for a while. And we were trying to balance out uh, political attraction of the various factions. Um, it's, it's not bad, we managed to give some more power to the military faction uh, with the censor and uh, the edile. The mercantile is kinda too strong at the moment, but that's normal, because uh, the consul in charge is from the mercantile faction. And uh, uh, religious 26. 
civic faction is uh, it's kind of high because they they are basically controlling or all the the questors and the, the technology positions. The guys here. They are yeah, but the the dealer except the dealer they're all from the civic faction. You can see this small hammer here, and of course they contribute with their charisma even if maybe not that high all those positions are occupied by members of the civic factions and that's why their political attraction is so high and that's why probably their faction leader will be the next consul uh, okay let's unpause and see if our army here manages to get back uh, is morale um, okay okay Carthage just wanted to land on um, um, Agerbrutius not to siege it but to move to Syracuse because Carthage is at war with Epirus uh, as the main target of the war this is what the what the asterisk mean there uh, Magna Grecia is just an ally, so they're giving priority to their main enemy. Okay, um, I'll put to speed 2 and s let's see how fast this replenishes. I, um, I think it's on a weekly basis. Point 36. Try speed 3. Yeah, you actually have to uh, move the mouse away and go back, so the tooltip can refresh. Well, seems more like it's on a monthly basis. Uh, just pause a moment. An old wound becomes too much. An old wound has been troubling Viridia Prima for some time. Who is Viridia Prima now? She is the wife of uh, a former consul. That has the ambition to become Dukes of Magna Grecia. Well, we'll see that. An old wound has been trapping Viridia Prima for some time, however, she has clung on to life in ever increasing pain. Alas, her will to live was not enough in the end. Ah, Viridia Prima has died. Well, she was a cripple, she had, she had pneumonia, and she was schizophrenic, I, I, I guess. I guess that was a relief. Um. My consul, we have won the battle of Marisiculum. The forces of Pyrrhus are fleeing. We lost zero ships, while well, they lost five ships. This happened here. Um, Publius Cornelius Rufinus, the guy who we put in charge, got uh, zero popularity. Okay, let's go back to speed two. No morale yet. Uh, well, we have no problem, no manpower problems. Uh, if we had more gold now, we could actually uh, speed up all this by just uh, hiring um, or better recruiting um, a lot of regiments and just use them to assault Tarentum. Uh, but we just have nine gold. So while we wait for these speed one, uh, we could check our balance. Two point eight a month, a month. Uh, a total of point thirty two of our income comes from our trade. Our economy is solid, there is no need to change anything. Well, not really true. We there for sure if we could manage to get some external trade routes instead of only uh, trading between internally between our provinces, we would get much more gold like uh, at least double or even more. And 
the other things is, uh, is taxation 52 uh, uh, 52.9 slaves 21.2 percent of 249.1 people Lucius Emilius Barbola plus six uh, yeah the Lucius Emilius Barbola plus like six percent is just a normal uh, ruler bonus uh, that comes from uh, his uh, finesse and right yeah and thank you very much uh, enjoy your game and good luck with it and thank you for coming in see you later no morale enough yet yes taxation taxation comes from slaves uh, and he, he, uh, here's when when we check our population in the nation overview you can see that your population is uh, uh, divided up in three main categories we have citizens freemen slaves and slaves uh, uh, represent hard labor and that's why the game abstract that part uh, telling you that taxation just comes from slaves it just means in that province there are that many hard labor producing farming mining whatever it is and that's where uh, taxation comes from um, because in every province you have a population number um, let's see next month we can move I guess first of March every province uh, as a population like in Campania we have a, a population of seven citizens 15 freemen and sense, uh, seven slaves uh, I will I really can tell you if uh, this is intended to be corresponding to uh, um, some real number like thousands or ten of thousands something I don't know it's uh, it's just a way to to show you how inhabited is an area compared to another like if you look at Rome you have like 26 citizens 32 freemen and six slaves while uh, this is kind of empty six nine I guess you, we, we could also check that from our country overview characters, families, charts production, no well, no, then the only uh, way we can check that it's here mm. so yeah, we can see that the most slaves are in Etruria, Umbria and Samnum, right? Umbria, Umbria. Yeah. Seven, six and six. Well but that's just a percentage. Okay, our army is ready to move again. Um, is there isn't there any way to check uh, Overview actions. Is this from just the trade routes, income graph, expenses, e country overview, tax? Okay, well, yeah, this is the, the closest you, you can get. You can put all your provinces um, in um, ordered by tax amount. So we'll see that Rome is the province providing us the most taxes. And uh, Puglia, Campania. Oh, well, 
why are we seeing this? Is the, the war is not over yet? Yeah, it already shows us the um, provinces that we are trying to occupy. Campania, Lucania, and Apulia, right? Campania. Ah, no, it's not that. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, I got confused because I read Magna Grecia there. Sorry, Ledger. I read Magna Grecia, and uh, so I thought it was telling me about uh, the political Magna Grecia, but he was just talking about the region. If you put your map in region now, map mode, you can see how this is considered Italia, and how all these, no matter who's controlling it at the moment, is, is considered Magna Grecia. And clicking on the single um, provinces, you can see how uh, there is another guy in charge here. If you click on Rome, it's uh, the, the consul, the main ruler of the country. But uh, here is a, it's a different region. It's uh, ruled by uh, this guy. Marcus Attilius Regulus, Dux Magna Grecia. Dux is a title for governor that the game uses. The governor of a region of provinces, a very prestigious position. Personally, wealth, prominence, prominence. Uh, yeah, it's kind of an important position. It, it doesn't influence the Senate, but it gives uh, a lot of power to the, the character wealth as well and uh, yeah he has very low uh, finesse and I guess uh, governor finesse uh, influence how much taxation we get out from it the same way um, the main ruler finesse influence the, the taxation there yeah um, We are still opposed to the game. Yeah, uh, we say that uh, taxation. My consul Manius Valerius Maximus has fulfilled the ambition. Get married. Who's the guy? Populist faction leader. Mm, don't like you. With all oh, with all this charisma. Uh, wow! Look look at his wife, Emilia Prima. She's like an. A nine nine eight. Wow. Why? Okay. Charisma minus one. Lucius Emilius Barbula is from one of the most prestigious families in the Republic. People from less important families try to seek friendship with him because of this. Still, even friends from less noble families might be useful. Hmm. Lucius Emilius, people from less try to seek friendship with him. I will acknowledge their existence. One of the three options will happen. 50% I become a friend with this person. Who is who is her? Plain speaking, devout, good natured, uh, religious faction. Looks like an okay person to me. She is the wife of a former consul, actual censor. Mm, not noble enough for my family? Which is uh, getting a trait suspicious. What family are you from? Vitellius. Well, family prestige 5, and we are from the Emili. Family prestige 1000. I, I guess we can have uh, one more friend. Um, when are they arriving? 5th of April? Okay, let's see if we can go back to the slaves thing. Slaves provi provide taxation. Uh, slaves are lowest rank on the ladder. Without rights and privileges, they are in some way just a bunch of useless mouths to feed. However, they work for the citizens, 
and the labor pays their taxes. The more slaves in the province, the more possibilities for taxation. Exactly. Well, the other uh, two kinds of uh, uh, population you can have uh, are freemen. Freemen represent the small holders and small artisans in overall wealth. They provide very little in the way of taxation. However, what they do provide is a pool of healthy men who are loyal to the state, perfect material for the army. So, slaves equal uh, gold, or better say, taxation. Freemen equals manpower. Um, yeah, it's, it's, you can read it here. Currently, you gain uh, 735 each month. Um, and let's see if we can work out the formula. But yeah, the idea is that uh, we have 118.4 um, Freeman, a grand uh, total of 47.5% of our uh, population. That are providing manpower to us. Mm. Yeah, it looks like it's uh, 10, 8, uh, 8. I'm looking at the base value. Maximum 88, 28. Mm, yeah, you know what. Oh, wait, 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 battle is going on. Just wanted to use very quickly calculator to uh, get that formula. My consul, we have won the Battle of Lucania. Uh, during the struggle, wait, let's, let's go back to political, Carthage, yeah, let, let's move up here. Where is our... Uh, navy. Okay, this is the Carthaginian navy. Hamilcar Bostarid. Pirates. Uh, pirates pop up uh, in um, empty sea areas that are not uh, mm, have been visited um, by mm, players or uh, how to say uh, by any countries' ships. After a while, they pop up and they go around bothering you and they can blockade your ports meaning they will block your trade routes uh, okay we wiped out their 5000 troops so Carthage okay I, I think Epirus has no more navy now if Carthage is actually blockading him And yeah, just let's. As we are uh, at large, let's just take the chance to get rid of some pirates. So our triremes will stay in good shape. We are moving here to um, go to siege Tarentum. Oh, uh, yeah, while we are doing that, let's see if I can manage. And a calculator without messing up too much with the stream. And yeah, I wanted to uh, divide this number base value 8.828. Well, not a point. Um, divided 118.4. Seventy-four. Mm. There must be some hidden modifier we can see because from what I'm seeing now, the maximum manpower uh, would be equal to seven times your your freeman. Well, the base value multiplied by ten. Uh, there must be for sure from some other uh, modifier that I will try to find out and tell you next time. Uh, 
but the relationship is is a very direct and uh, it's there uh, the more free men you have the more manpower you have Uh, compose again. I guess these two men can go there as well. Uh, okay, we have two ships here. Mm, yeah, they will join the big fleet. And uh, we should invoke an omen. Should we? We have a 49% chance. Uh, can we stay without a Nomen for a while? Populous faction has just a 35% attraction. Oh well, but the religious one is gonna lose too much if we don't get the Nomen. Yeah. Even if we fail, it's uh, it's better to invoke that. We have won the battle of uh, Mare Ionium. The forces of pirates are fleeing. Good. Um, okay, this is some Spanish barbarians doing their small wars. Okay. Join the two fleets. Religion is going to counterentum. And let's see now how uh, we can propose a peace offer to Magna Grecia. Uh, my consul, our consul, is now a member of the military faction. Ah, yeah, 1st of May, 75. Uh, the new guy. So it was not the civic one, and it was not even the. Uh, let's see, was it the faction leader? Aha! Is the legate? Is Mr. Quintus Emilius Papus? Yeah, this happened. Uh, because winning all those battles and sieges gave him a lot of popularity. Like, uh, uh, yeah, he got popularity and prominence. Everyone likes him. That's that's what happened. Uh, also, cause the military faction uh, at this moment as a plus ten percent for claims on foreign provinces and the 2% for a huge army that's 2% because we are exactly 2 cohorts over our force limit so uh, having an, um, a very big army bigger than uh, and a very expensive army um, bigger than uh, a standard one can also give more power to the military faction so it can also be used to do that and um, well uh, now we have a, uh, another place point five morale of armies and land organization this until he is in charge meaning for two years yep Uh, we could also change military ideas now but we already choose the only one we have so and he has a finance 5, marshal 7, charisma 5 well Quintus Milius Papus good leadership skills and superior tactical knowledge will help us vanquish those to dare stand against us looks good we just have to hope it doesn't become too loud and powerful because that can happen as well a consul who's um, too uh, um, popular could try to force the issue and stay in power 
and especially if after his term ended we don't keep him in good consideration he could uh, rebel and start a civil war and uh, yeah you can also see that he already has some loyal cohorts it is a small chain here one two three yeah the um, more battles a cohort uh, wins uh, with the same legate um, more chances it will become loyal to him and once they are loyal they will stay loyal to him until he's around and what that means is that um, uh, if there is um, a rebellion, uh, they will uh, side with him, no matter what. We will probably see this happening before the end of the game. Not, not with him, I mean, but some other guy. Uh, so that's why it's important to uh, mm, don't keep your army all concentrated in one big chunk because in uh, if they are uh, all to uh, if they all your army is loyal to a guy who's going to rebel because he wants more power or whatever that's going to really cause a bad situation to control so important to don't keep the army all uh, grouped up split it up and also to um, don't always leave the command to the same general actually now we cannot even change but he's there Pergamon accept peace with Bithynia okay. them yeah we will just let uh, the guy end the war and then split up the army and put some other people in charge we don't want too many armies to um, became attached to him there is a food for uh, shortage already oh we forgot about the omen Well, it's very balanced, the Senate at the moment. 20 senators from the military, 20 mercantile, 20, 22, 17. I just don't want to live with the bad effects of a failed omen. Water shortage. City will probably surrender within six months. Well, the war is almost won. And when you're winning a war, you go into the diplomatic options here there are like small shortcuts here to do that but you can also to see them more um, in a more complete way you open the diplomacy window and then you click on the uh, target country and then the take action um, this is the guy we are sending as an envoy and he's supposed to have a good charisma and he's the... I don't think we have anyone with higher charisma he's fair have a son, have a son yeah, yeah I guess the guy is okay as a diplomat yeah, the diplomats don't really... Uh, they just influence um, they just, if they are, have a good charisma, they just um, positively in influence the chance that um, your uh, diplomatic mission will have a positive uh, outcome. Um, so, negotiate for peace. The ruler will lose some popularity by taking this action. Why? Military faction want to stay at war. Faction opinion minus 61. Yeah, the military factions don't like 
to shoot for peace, they would like just an ongoing state of war. Mercantile faction, faction opinion 100%, they want to end it. And same for, for everyone else. Uh, well, it's not bad if we lose some popularity. Well, let's suppose because we ended the siege here. Tinia and Pontus. Uh, we have won the siege of Tarentum. Okay. What you do when you um, shoot, uh, sue for peace is uh, um, having the chance to choose between some very, in the end, simple actions uh, based on your current war score. Our war score now is um, 100% because we have conquered all their territories Magna Grecia is our uh, main enemy it's just um, uh, allied with the Pyrrhus and the Tolian League um, so if you conquer allies it doesn't really change the war score that much uh, Magna Grecia hasn't conquered any of our provinces that would um, lower the war score. Yeah, the lower score uh, uh, tells you how much the attacker is doing, how well he's doing. So, uh, diplomacy, Magna Grecia, take action. Okay, now that actually we have a um, 100% score even the military faction is um, is okay with with the peace. Sire, we have won a devastating victory over Magna Grecia and have the possibility to completely annexing them. However, this would greatly upset the rest of the Greek world. We negotiate on behalf of our entire alliance, and they are nego negotiating for their entire alliance. Uh, annex, demand tribute, offer white peace, offer tribute. Offer white peace? Yeah, uh, that would be very stupid now because it would revert the situation to how it was before we started the war. The men tribute, they would keep their uh, independence, but they would uh, send us money. Offer tribute, we, that's something you are trying to do when you're losing a war. And next, um, if the you, if the war score is high enough and they accept the annex, your enemy in general will um, give to you all the provinces uh, you conquered. Now we conquer the totality of Magna Grecia, but um, maybe we could have conquered just one, and um, after a while the war score got high enough for. Uh, uh, accepting an annex um, proposition, we would have conquered just one province and the other would have stayed Magna Grecia. So it's a very simplified uh, war diplomacy uh, model compared to uh, like Crusader Kings or U4. But that's, I guess, also because conquerors were kind of easier to manage back in the ancient world. It was just a matter of I win, you lose. Um, so, we do it from the shortcut, we shoot for peace, and we demand their annexation. We don't want tribute, especially when we have this mission here. Oh, Papos would get even more prominence. Uh, yeah, can't be helped. He was the guy who lead uh, who did uh, lead our troops? Okay, we have to unpause for this to take effect and refresh the political map mode. My consul, Magna Grecia, accepted our generous peace offer. We demand their full annexation and uh, our realm stability increased to plus one. Uh, a refugee, refugee, conflict with the Carthaginians. Wait, this is for later. Uh, 
these all uh, are new people who were in those territories and now came under our uh, protection. Lucius Antoninus Salinator, a refugee from Magna Grecia, has arrived. Who is this guy? Antonius, zero family prestige. Vocation Tarentum, religion Roman, culture Mesopic Latin. Was he anyone? A proprietor? Ah, he was the proprietor of uh, Magna Grecia there. Okay. Was his wife. The conflict with the Carthaginians has been dragging on for too long. It's time we leveled our cities to the ground and break them once for all. Cartago de Lenda Est. This is our new mission. Destroy Carthage. The conflict with the Carthaginians has been dragging on for too long. It's time we leveled their cities to the ground and break them once and for all. Uh, but we have a lot of time to do this. We have uh, 30 years to prepare and wait for the right moment. Uh, and when we fulfill this, the consul would get one marshal, popularity, 60 gold, but I'm sure that in 30 years he won't be um, Emilius Papus. Mm, yeah, and the fulfillment requirement is controlling Carthage. So, yeah, now uh, we're talking. But I don't like the fact that. Okay, now with Pyrrhus, as he was allied with our enemy in the war, uh, he's going to have a truce with us. Truces uh, do last five years. So, until the 3rd of October, 480, won't be allowed to declare war on us. But really, not sure there will be an appearance left, as Carthage is just attacking them. Hmm. Feel threatened. Well, I guess now that the war is over, uh, we can. Fix our internal situation and try to colonize the northern regions. Uh, to do this, we want to um, split our army in two. Maybe, oh, let's see, I don't want to. We have six. Uh, Okay, so we need 4,000 archers. One, two, three, four. Uh, yeah, maybe more, but whatever. And we also want to divide up the loyal cohorts so they are not in the same uh, legion. We want to give more infantry this way. No. Nine Yeah, now they are more or less the same. Problem is, the second legion has no legate at the moment. And we really don't want to wait too long before assigning a new legate, otherwise I'm sure the populists will complain and tell, oh, just put this random guy. Mm, the former consul, seven, became legate, and proconsul. Proconsul pro means he, he was the, the last consul in charge. 
only after proconsul they get the former consul title so yeah th this was the the guy who stopped being who has been consul between 73 and 75 and in 75 it became proconsul and he will stay proconsul until the actual consul um, steps down and became proconsul oh but now we also are supposed to uh, trade this stuff here okay um, second legion we put we put the the former consul he did a good job yeah and also fulfilling people's ambitions is always good because they gain a lot of loyalty Sparta accepted with their former enemies a can league on the following terms Sparta okay okay Uh, we are moving our armies to Rome and now I would really want to um, to give the other army to someone else maybe Would that makes sense resign expect to hold his office until 1st of January 76 Dismissing him prematurely will have the following effects. Quintus Emilius becomes former legate. Well, he has 100 uh, loyalty, so I don't really think he will revolt. We could put um, this other guy. The office of Praetor was second only to consul. Proprietors also went on to govern a region after their term as a magistrate. Uh, Lucius Antonius Salinator has made secret of his ambition to Naviquester. As the current holder had served a full term, the Senate agrees that this is right and proper. Okay, uh, well, solution popped up by itself um, where is our navy now oh we forgot it here uh, come on the guy here now a prefect of the first navy cannot change literacy yeah I just I just wanted to quickly check how uh, if his term is really expired of course it, it is really expired just want to check um, if it's written there come on where is my resign yeah um, the message we got for dismissing the other guy here did not pop up um, so it means we can just resign him with no problem appoint Lucius Antonius Alinator to Naviquester populist faction lose one senator military faction gain three senators I decide what is right and proper. Populist faction going one. Uh, well, three senators to the military. Yeah, it's okay. Kill 23. 22. Just wanted to keep the populists down. Valeria Tertia died. Who was this guy? Former consul of. a long time ago. Omen, Omen, we keep forgetting our Roman. Uh, trade income, I want to get some more population. Population growth. Blessing of Cupid. No. 
not bad. Now, uh, while we wait that our army moves up, I'm not getting that pop up now. Because <clears throat> the term is over. Supposed to be a legatus as a well. oh, legate first legion. No, no, it's not written there when it's supposed to expire. He became legate in 1st of January 74, or just when we started the game. Uh, yeah, just don't remember how long he's supposed to be a legate. But historically, the consul was actually uh, quite often a uh, leading. Rome armies, so I guess we can live with that. Uh, this guy now is actually governating one, two, three, five uh, provinces. It's better stay loyal to us. He's the leader of the religious faction, okay. Is the Dukes of Magna Grecia. And still the religious faction is just a six attraction. Maybe more with the invoked omen. No. Become now requester. This is our new guy. We want to trade uh, yeah, grain. I want horses. Cavalry is very powerful. I really would love to get some horses. That's game. That's game does. Starting experience plus ten percent. Horses are already being sold to this guy here, Sarmatia, grain from Aladzones, okay, it's just trading internally. Uh, spice, well, spice is cool, religious prestige. No horses available at the moment, we'll just have to conquer them. Uh, well, there are horses here and in Illyria. They are just allied with Dacha. Where is Dacha now? Can you see Dacha, guys? I thought this was Dacha. Tesli, Macedonia. This is that. Oh, here it is. Well, I yeah, don't really have it. Not a big threat for us. Has the mission protect Illyrian and Peonia. Ah, Illyrians. Uh, it means there is some people of their own culture in a province of another um, ruler with a different culture. Yeah. And they have the mission to get them back, basically. Okay, 20% omen invoked is there now. What we don't want now is the military faction getting too much power. Okay, uh, let's move uh, first legion. 
probably select just one of them. Liguria and Bononia. And we'll take care of the barbarians here and try to colonize. Well, they walk north. We talk about uh, the last kind of uh, uh, population we have in our provinces. As uh, we have seen, we have slaves, and they directly influence your gold income, the taxation one. It's the main one, as you can see. You can do a lot from trade, but maybe later in the game. Uh, Freeman. They influence directly your manpower and citizens. Citizens uh, represent the top of society. They are just below the major nobility in wealth and status. They have the kind of wealth to be free from the mundane concerns of life. Taxation is not a problem because they own a lot of slaves who do that bit for them. In fact, they devote themselves to higher problems and generate research for the nation. Generate research. This is the first time we look at this. Monthly research points. Uh, your citizens have the free time to think about things. This in turn generates research points for the nation. The greater the number of citizens, the faster things are researched. We have a total of 81.2 citizens. Uh, I don't know, really, thousands or what, what they are supposed to be. 26.3% uh, of uh, uh, our people mm, they provide us a total of 5.2 research points research, research points that are spent in the technology window they are evenly um, divided up between you you just seen the bar going up for all of them every month that's calculated that that 5.2 you can see it here we have um, a monthly increase given by uh, that 5.2 given by the citizens and that's uh, um, augmented by our uh, the corresponding guy uh, finesse like uh, Mr. Gaius Fabius Licinus with his 9 finesse giving a plus 80% why not? Ah, lazy, minus 1, I see uh, and that's it so technology is only influenced by the total of your citizens and the finesse skill of uh, the guy in charge of that technology plus 60, 70, 70, they are all doing a, a good job. Um, so you always want to keep a decent uh, balance in your population types. Technology is important for sure, but uh, it's also true that it's usually numbers who decide a battle. And it's not like uh, the other countries are going crazy with technology anyway. Uh, so, well, you want to have your standard number of citizens. You want to have a, a good number of freemen to be sure to have a, a big manpower pool in the case you lose uh, some battles in a row or have a very long war in sight. And of course you want a lot of slaves because they provide you taxation but not too many of them 